this. It's a maple leaf. Now, maples are a deciduous family. Um, they're broadleaf trees. They lose their leaves in the winter. They're also known as a hardwood. Out here on the West Coast, we don't hear too much about maples. They're really a, a Midwestern and Eastern North America phenomenon. They form beautiful forests out there. Um, maple syrup tapping, very big out in the Midwest as well as back East. But here in Washington, as it turns out, even though we're known for our dark evergreen forests, we actually have three species of maple right here in our state. Two of those species are pretty small. They're an understory tree that mostly grows very close to the ground. But one of our species of maple is actually the largest in North America. We're gonna take a little bit of time to get out there and learn about that tree today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the big leaf maple tree, one of the dominant maples that you can find in the Western United States, and one of the only really large ones out on this side of the country. Now, as the name implies, big leaf maples have really big leaves. This one that I've drawn on the board next to me right here is a pretty fair example of actual size. They can be up to two feet wide, um, significantly larger than any other maple leaf that you're going to find here in North America. That's a very clear identification feature. Going with that, these are deciduous trees, uh, which means they're gonna be losing their leaves in the winter. That's a little bit unusual here in Washington state. We are the evergreen state after all. Um, but the reason behind this partially uh, is because if you have two foot wide leaves and it snows on top of you, that's a lot of snow piling up. It's a huge amount of weight and it means that your branches could break. Um, it's much easier just to shed those leaves in the winter time. Um, you're gonna see that in the fall with big leaf maples turning beautiful orange to yellow colors uh, before dropping all of those leaves onto the ground. Other features of this tree are it's going to be fairly large, especially for a maple, um, and you'll find it mixed in oftentimes with other evergreen trees in our forests up here. The bark, if you can see it, uh, is going to be kind of light gray with little furrows like canyons running through it. The reason I say if you can see it is because uh, big leaf maples are actually known for having a lot of moss and lichen and ferns growing on them. More on that later in this video. For now, let's get out into the wild here and see what this tree looks like in our forests. I'm out here today in the forests of Western Washington with my friend, the big leaf maple tree. Before we jump a little bit into the ecology of this tree, let's take a moment to appreciate the fact that this tree is very different from a lot of the trees that we have out here in Western Washington. Unlike hemlocks and Douglas fir and western red cedar, this tree isn't an evergreen. It loses its leaves every single winter, and there just aren't that many trees like that in western Washington. One reason for that is that the climate here is really favorable for those kind of trees, those conifers. They like a nice mild climate where the winters don't get too cold, but there's also a lot of rainwater available, and actually, so does big leaf maple. This makes it a little bit different from some of its eastern relatives who can survive very cold winters. Big leaf maple is actually better adapted to more mild habitats and actually can't really survive very well on the east side of the Cascade Mountains or the Sierra Nevadas where the winters get a lot colder and a lot harsher. Now this tree does have a pretty broad geographic distribution, meaning that it grows from British Columbia all the way down into central California. One thing that might be the first thing that a lot of people notice about the big leaf maple is all of the moss growing on the trunk here. That happens really particularly in moist climates where there's enough water for the moss to grow on the trunk. But in some places like the Ho Rainforest on the Olympic Peninsula, it's kind of the thing that defines these trees. Draping, hanging moss and ferns and lichen coming off of these trunks Sometimes all that extra weight living on the bark of the tree can actually weigh four times as much as the foliage of the tree, the leaves on the tree itself. And even more than that, when the, the moss is wet, that's a pretty cool feature. Let's look a little bit more about how this tree fits into the ecosystem of Western Washington. There's a couple things that help the big leaf maple to survive in this native habitat here. One of those things would be mild shade tolerance. Now, that needs a little bit of explaining. What that means is that unlike certain other deciduous trees that we have here in Washington state, the big leaf maple can sprout and grow in an environment where there's already a little bit of competition from other trees. To compare that, we have the red alder tree and the black cottonwood, which are also native to our state. 
those trees really need a disturbance to clear away all of the competition before they can come in and grow. They need full sunlight. If there's already a stand of conifers around, they're actually not going to have enough sunlight to survive all the way to adulthood. That's not the case with the big leaf maple. The big leaf maple is able to germinate or sprout even in forests where other trees are already present. That's why we'll oftentimes see big leaf maple growing in forests that are already fully formed forests rather than just out in clear cut logging sites, areas where landslides have gone through, places where the river has flooded. Instead, you'll find big leaf maple mixed in with a lot of other different species of trees. In order to survive in a habitat where other trees are competing for sunlight, you have to have a few advantages. The big leaf maple solves this problem by growing larger than any other maple tree in North America. This specimen that I have behind me here is fairly large, but these trees can actually get up to being more than six feet in diameter and over 150 feet tall. Some of the really large ones are even bigger. There's a tree in Oregon that measures 11 feet across. Now, the way that the trees grow differs depending on what kind of a habitat they're in. In a forest like this, a big leaf maple tree like the one behind me here is going to exhibit what's called high apical control. That means that this tree is going to grow straight up towards where the sunlight is. It's not going to spread out and send out huge branches in every direction because there's other trees around us here in the forest that are already taking that sunlight. It needs to get above the canopies of all of the other stuff growing around it or it might get shaded out and die. Now, if this tree were to have sprouted instead in an open field or maybe a logging site, it would have what's called low apical control. In that case, what's going to happen is the big leaf maple tree is going to spread out with large branches going in every direction. It's going to make a very rounded tree, sometimes even wider than it is tall. That's one way that the big leaf maple tree capitalizes on what habitat it's growing in in order to make sure that it gets enough sunlight to support its growth. So we're down here in Marble Mount, Washington, just outside of North Cascades National Park, taking a look at another special feature of our local big leaf maple trees that we have out here in Washington. So right behind you here, you might notice that there are tubes coming out of this tree. Um, and that's because today I went in and tapped this tree. I mean, the goal here is actually to extract the sap of the big leaf maple tree. And with it, we're going to try to make some big leaf maple syrup. Um, you may have eaten maple syrup before. Most maple syrup is produced from the sugar maple. Uh, you'll generally find that tree in the Midwest or on the east side of North America. Um, but these maples here actually have similar traits that allow us to do that. Um, what makes this tree special is a couple of things. First of all, the sap content of maple trees is very high. Uh, sugar maples have kind of the highest sap content of any of the maple trees, but even these big leaf maples here have enough syrup inside of their sap uh, that you can make a really, really tasty treat. You can drink the sap raw or you can boil it down in order to make maple syrup, uh, but you're going to do a lot of boiling because you need as much as 80 gallons of sap uh, just to make one gallon of maple syrup. Now, the second special thing about this is this tree is deciduous, meaning that it doesn't have any leaves on it right now in the middle of winter. There's snow all around us right now. Um, and the reason that it loses those leaves is, again, if you get snow piling up on those massive up to two foot diameter leaves, chances are that weight's going to be too much for the tree to bear and it's going to fall down. Um, but with that being the case, there's not really a huge reason for the sap inside of the tree to be moving up the tree in a way that it would pump it out into our tubes right here. So what actually happens here um, is maple trees have specialized cells on the outside of the vessels that carry the sap up and down. And those specialized cells are full of air, but when the temperature gets down below freezing, water begins flowing from the main vessels into those cells as kind of a storage area where it can go off to the side to prevent major freezing damage. As the temperature warms up again, that uh, water begins moving back into the main vessels. Um, and that movement back and forth of water causes the sap to move up and down the tree in a way that kind of acts like a pump, allowing the sap to drip out into our tubes right here through the little holes that we've drilled into this tree uh, and into a little bucket we have set up right over here. That's very, very special. Um, and it's kind of the process behind tapping maples for maple syrup. Some important notes about tapping big leaf maple trees in order to make maple syrup. You have to make sure you're doing it right in order not to hurt the tree. Try to look up some detailed instructions on tapping if you ever want to try this at home. 
Another thing that's really important to know is that in order for this process to work, temperatures have to be moving between below freezing and just above freezing. So you have to catch it at the right time. In western Washington down in the lowlands, especially along the Puget Sound and the coast, temperatures don't often actually get below freezing. So it's important to check in and see what the weather reports are saying before you try this out. The next time you're out in the forest, take a look around and see if you can spot a big leaf maple tree. And remember how this tree connects you with the rest of the ecosystem.